Lafayette, Kokomo, but those things are here already. So we need enough people to deal with it. And, you know, there's teams standing by, but we need to, we need to deal with it. Mark? So if what we've got is two officers working. What we need is community engagement from the sheriff and his guys to come out and talk to everyone, and get everybody on board with see something and say something. That's what we need. We need everybody in this room, not necessarily to wear a brown uniform, but to be the eyes that we can't be. That's what we need. We have those. How would you make that happen? Again. As sheriff. As I'm doing right now, meet and greets. I'm talking to people. I'm getting their insight. That's necessary. When I'm out there talking to people, people want to talk to these guys. They enjoy talking to the police. We are now in an area that this pendulum is swinging. We need to take a hold of that and get the community involvement. That's what we need. More questions? Okay. in the Methodist Church out here, right behind here. God needs to be in the jail. Well, I got a question. You're the executive. Why aren't you, why aren't you pushing that? Why aren't you doing something to get them back in there? Again, I do detective stuff. If I don't... No, Sue, listen to me. Don't, just, don't shake your head. Please, just give me a second to answer you. You want me to solve this case. You want me to solve this case. But then you also say... Why aren't you pushing for this? Why aren't you? I'm in a no-win situation, so I do the best that I can. And I'm not pointing this just directly at you. We well, just, just did. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm saying as chief deputy, you know, you can't just be a detective all the time. If you took over the chief deputy stuff, you need to be doing that part of it too. How is there enough time in the day for you to have family and to do both jobs? Thank but you. I Amen. I understand where you're coming from. But why can't you assign someone or take volunteers, somebody that you can verify that would be safe to come into the jail to give programs and to help teach the people. And there's all kinds of programs out there. I keep hearing grants, grants, grants. Well, there's this kind of programs out there too that nobody is even touching. And those inmates are sitting in there thinking about, okay, when I get out, what can I do to not get caught the next time? Okay. Sue, so I'm, I'm on you board with that. So I'm absolutely on board with that. Just because I'm chief deputy doesn't mean your husband was sheriff. 
That doesn't mean I can change what Tobe thinks. I did that. Okay, but so, so I have a pretty high profile case that I'm working on. I'm the only detective now. I do the best that I can for everybody that I can. So to just throw that onto me, the sheriff makes the policies for his jail. I'm telling you that I will let those people in. That's the best answer that I can give you. I want to bring in mental health people. I want to do those things. And I want to tell you, as a citizen that is retired, if you get sheriff, if you get sheriff, I'll be glad to volunteer and do whatever I can do to help with those programs. Absolutely. I understand how important all that is. Absolutely. And I'm, and I, just bottom line, I'm all for that stuff. I'm absolutely for it. Tony, I would like to ask, and I'm sorry, Mark, but we'll get to you. Uh, would you continue that policy of the current administration of not allowing the chief deputy to do chief deputy jobs? I mean, you got a bump in pay when you took that job, right? Ever so slightly. Whatever, you know. Like, we're talking ever so slightly. But would you, would you continue the policy of, of the current sheriff of not letting the chief deputy do chief deputy stuff? Absolutely not. I don't know that that is, that is his policy. I've not seen that as a written policy, but it's spread the love when it comes with me. I need you to help me do this. I need you to help me do this. It, and not just put everything on one person. Absolutely. Mark, you want to enter into this conversation? I kind of made it go sideways, but. I'll get into uh, allowing different programs and different uh, people into the jail. Mental Health America, mommy, substance abuse, counselors, all need to be in there. God needs to be in jail. What you have is when you have not been doing it long enough, I've seen their parents, child, and now their children. So I'm probably three generations into dealing with the same people. So what we've got to do is stop recidivism. That's the biggest thing. And all those are different places like Mental Health America and Substance Abuse Council and even the Bible with whatever minister or whatever they think is necessary for them at that time in jail. I'm in hopeful that one person will pick something up and let them not be in jail again. And that might build into doing more with that. So it'll stop two problems. It might help the initial person that had a problem because they can't be the best father, the best mother that they can be, maybe they will then, in turn, make it to where their children are in jail. So, and then you had another question about I, the chief deputy wondering. spot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, delegation is key. One person can't do everything. And what you have to do is have someone in that spot that you fully trust and know what his morals and values and integrity stand for and have him do your work with you. Not for you, but with you. Other questions? Becky. Okay. It's obvious we're short staffed. Mark, you have said over and over that there's help there waiting to help us. Win, lose, or draw. I don't care which one wins. Are you still willing to help our county? And are you willing to accept help for our county? Mark, you go first. I do help this county. I got a call, I'm trying to think when it was, from the chief of Florida, when they had what they didn't know was a murder at the time, not too far from my house. I got that call, they were busy, they were short. I needed to go to Indianapolis. Yes, I do help this county. As far as uh, other cases, other more serious cases, my department sent me here to work with Tony, with Kevin, with other agencies. So yes, that help is still there no matter what. As a, I know we've said that Tony has two hats. Imagine being a Lafayette police detective with a full caseload. I run anywhere from 25 to 30 cases on my dashboard every day and more of them coming in every day. I, well, I also, I mean, but you were
were saying there were groups. There were groups waiting to help. Are those groups still willing to help if you're not sheriff? Yes. The groups that I'm speaking about have been turned down for help. Tommy. The groups have not been turned down. The groups that, if we're talking about drug task force, that when we when we have things that need work in the drug task force realm, we contact state police. State police is working with Lafayette, Tiffany County. <coughs> Regardless, I don't have a problem with Mark. Lafayette Police Department, I don't have a problem with Lafayette Police Department, Tiffany County. We're all good old boys. All of us are good old boys. And we, we will help in whatever way we need. And I'm not a good old boy. <laughs> and I know, and I'm Paul Mark. There's If there's something I need and it deals with Lafayette, I call Mark. And the same thing, if something that happens in Carroll County he needs me, he calls me. That's, that's how it works. This is not, I'm not an adversary with Mark Pinker or Lafayette or anybody. We're all gonna work together all the time. If we need something, Lafayette will send guys from their drug cap. It's, it's not adversarial. It, it really is not. Other questions? Oh, thank you. One, just, okay. Uh, on this, you said that help has been refused. Why? I don't know what help he's talking about. There have been agencies that have uh, offered help to different cases. We'll get into which cases they are. TBI for one of them, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. They have wanted to help. And they have. They, that dispatch is, was going to stay where it is, but now we're back to there is space okay. for it, okay. but it's still staying, but there's space for it. Okay, my question is, whichever one of you becomes here, you're going to 
be both of you after you share a cut, too. Are you, are you going to make sure that jail is built to last for the next 50 to 75 years and that it's done right? And building it on the county home property, in my opinion, and this is my opinion only, is not the place to put the jail. The best thing, I, again, kind of like I said earlier, I'm not a, I'm not a maintenance guy, I'm not a builder, but the, the commissioners need to make sure to have those things in place, have contracts in place. I, Joe Hildebrand felt like one of your employees, but we need to stay on that. We need to keep up with the warranties and, and do all those things to keep that jail. I'm sure they said it back then, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but would. This jail is supposed to be able to be added on to. They're doing it in pods. So it doesn't do any good if the rest of it crumbles if they attach a pod to it and we can add more people. So it has to be kept up. It has to be. It, it's, that's down to like, actually, I probably don't really have brass anymore. We have brass up here that, you know, polishing brass and things like that make a big difference. Well, we'll transport to these prisoners, these inmates. I think part of your question is calling the sheriff and then having to call somebody else after that. Call me we'll, and we'll take care of calling whoever it is that we need to call. Not, not, not we, I mean. Their job and not dispatch doing their job. 
So your question is, have the officer called the sheriff? To get, yeah, absolutely. We should make that happen. We, we should make that happen, absolutely. I don't, I don't know that I've ever asked you or dispatch in general to call somebody else to call them out. You just make the call. Okay, I have a question up here. Oh, no. Statement, sorry. Okay. Hi, I'm Dale Seward. Um, several years ago, probably about 20 years ago, uh, the, there was a program implemented where there was dual uh, TV monitors, one in Superior Court and one in the jail. And that may have been before your time, Tony. I don't know the, exactly when it happened. But for some reason, it, this was implemented under Curtis Fouts when he was the judge of Superior Court. And all of a sudden, those monitors disappeared out of the courtroom. I can't say whether they did out of the jail or not, but they, they were removed for some reason. Um, and we've talked a lot tonight about staffing issues. To me, that was a great idea because you could do the um, preliminary hearing for court and not have to take staff to move the person from court to the courthouse, or from jail to the courthouse. So uh, would you be in favor of implementing a program like that to, to save on uh, using uh, staff members to get people from the jail to the courtroom if they could just do it over monitors? Or has that been uh, illegal now and it can't be done? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, there is. Uh, no, that, that was, I don't know why they're not doing that now. Uh, there was a, a jail meeting where we found out for sure all that's going to be capable in the new jail video visitation so you don't have to just go get the inmate, take clear up, you know, just take the, the time to take somebody up to visit, be video visits. So there's brand new monitoring systems in Superior Court. So those capabilities are there. I don't know why it's not happening, if there's something wrong with it on the jail side because I've taken people to, I've transported people to court and attorneys are on the TV, you know, they're, they're making their presence in over video. And they don't, to my knowledge, I've not seen that in circuit court at all, but the capability is there and, it, and it's, it's gonna be really enhanced in the new jail. So Dale, better than that is uh, with this new jail, we make a spot or have a spot allocated for the judges to come there, so there's no transport, there's no video monitoring. I see that happen at the Tiffany County Jail quite a bit. The judges go to court for their initial hearings. No transport, there's no glitches in electronics. It's face to face. <coughs> However, the judges are there with them. Okay, I think it's time for wrap ups. Tony, do you want to start? Sure. Please. Thank you. So I think that one of the questions earlier was about whether or not we're a politician or a public servant. In my conclusion notes right here, one of the, the first sentences, when I decided to run for sheriff, one of the biggest hurdles I knew I was going to have is that I'm not a politician. I'm a public servant. I'm no different than anyone in this room other than I feel like I've excelled in my law enforcement career and I feel like I'm the best choice for the next Carroll County Sheriff. That's it. My roots are deep in this community, county. They'll be even deeper because I have no plans on going anywhere. This is all I know. This county is all I know. I've only lived here for 49 years, but I hope I get another 49. With my training, skill, and ability, not only do I have the training, but I use it on a daily basis. The skill comes with using the training on a daily basis. I've been a polygraph examiner for criminal cases for a number of years. I have the training that we don't have to spend thousands of dollars from this county because I've already got it. I have training that's no longer available from the FBI, from the Secret Service, 
I've been in Hoover, Alabama to do some amazing things with computers. The team of people that I have worked with for a number of years fully back me. I know Tony says the deputies back him. I would fill this room with supporters from my department. I know that. I have trained the trainers that have trained these guys. For that reason, I'm your independent candidate for sheriff. Make sure that when you vote, you don't have to choose. That choice will be taken from you if you choose a party. Go through and look for the best candidate. And when you do that, you're going to find me as your independent candidate. Thank you. that you got out of them and what you gave. So be careful going home.